Today's episode is all about hair structure. What it is, what's it made of, and how does color affect it? So Val, I know that we talk about hair structure all the time, but now I'm seeing it everywhere in marketing materials for color, and I just really want a better understanding so I can make better decisions for my formulas and for my guests. When companies are talking about hair structure, they're talking about the actual hair fiber that comes out of your head. How is the shape of the hair contributing to strength or to the health of the hair or some other attributes, but it's really just a term for the health of the hair. There are four major types of components found in hair. The biggest one is protein. You may know that as keratin. Mm -hmm. There's also lipids that helps act as glue for all of the protein within the hair to keep it together. The lipids are also found on the outside of the hair. Melanin is another component, which is about one to 2% of hair content, depending what shade you have. That's what gives hair its natural color. And then there's also trace minerals found in the hair. And all of those combine in a specific orientation to each other to make up what we see as hair. So most people think that the hair is a biologically dead organism. It's just this dead thing growing out of your hair and you can do whatever you want to it. But hair is actually chemically alive. And so it has a lot of interesting chemical properties that change over time. So this is starting to make a little bit more sense with different things in terms of formulating. You're talking about melanin, you see that exposed in your formulation mm -hmm. when lightening. So when we talk about hair color, how does it affect the hair structure? So hair color and lightening can impact the hair structure in a negative way because it's a chemical treatment to the hair. When we look at virgin hair, which is the epitome of hair at its peak of health, it is shiny, it doesn't have uh, the ability to uptake water very easily, it's very strong. We have an expression in the lab that says you can't wet a healthy hair, and that's because of this fatty layer on the mm -hmm. outside of the cuticle. And then you have extremely damaged hair, hair that's been over-processed or lightened many times, and it looks radically different from virgin hair. And this is the difference in chemistry shifting over time on the hair fiber. I have virgin yeah. hair. It's really just hair in its peak state. That's what you want your hair to be, but it's often not the easiest to treat. So that makes sense when working with a direct dye, oftentimes with these fashion shades that are walking in, and some of them do have healthier hair, that would make sense why sometimes those shades won't last or even um, appear to be in the hair much, where if you have somebody who has that broken down, more porous hair, it will show up a little bit better. Exactly, it's much easier for the dyes to get into the hair fiber when the hair is severely damaged. But awesome. it's also easier for the dyes to leave. That makes sense too. Mm -hmm. If you as a colorist can understand the basic fundamentals of hair structure, you can make better decisions in what you're choosing to do to the hair in terms of the chemical service to get the best results. But you have to understand the fiber. So now instead of guessing, you're going to have more confidence behind the chair, mixing at the color bar, and understanding a little bit more of what you need to look for when working with your guests. No more fingers crossed and guessing at that color bar. Thanks, Al. Thanks, Jen. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, comment below. And on the next episode, we're gonna cover what the three main components of hair structure are. Woo! Yay!